Welcome to the 15th video in this video series of using the Godot game engine and the Rider IDE to create and modify a 3D mesh. In our last few videos, we have been refining a process of casting a ray from the camera to where we're mouse clicking on the cube and then determining um, which face of our cube is actually um, we clicked on so that we can highlight it in purple. And I had somebody in the last video comment that they had a way that Godot's, Godot had a native way of doing this without doing all the hard math that we did, hard math in quotation marks. And I looked a little bit at what they were doing, and uh, they're right. Um, the only issue I take with it is when I was looking up the documentation of why this works, um, I'm not really sure if we can count on this always working. Uh, it really depends on if they change, if Godot changes how they are computing uh, the con a, a convex, uh, or, yeah, concave, excuse me, a concave collision object. Um, and I'll cover that in a second because um, if they don't change that, this is fantastic and this will handle more cases than just our simple cube because I mentioned when I first started this that there were other um, situations. This cube was, this this algorithm we set up that computed the entry and exit point and computing the face, like this only works for something simple like this cube. And if we came up with something more complicated, we'd have to make our algorithm more complicated. And by using this built-in Godot way, we, we wouldn't have to um, limit ourselves to just this cube. Uh, so I'm gonna present what the uh, solution is and then it'll be up to you, the viewer, to decide if you want to try to use that as your way of doing this. Um, it works quite nicely, and if they don't change, or if they... I guess what I'm saying is, when you look up the documentation on how they are computing their concave algorithm, they never actually explicitly state that you can count that this is going to always be the same. So um, that's why I'm hesitant to recommend it as a, you know, a bulletproof solution that this is always going to work. However... Right now it does work and has worked for a while. So let me show you um, what the uh, solution was that was shown to me, and then I'll show you a little bit more on the, the why this works, and then um, you can decide for yourself if you want to use it. So if you remember in our code when we were creating and assigning the cube mesh, so um, down here we were creating this convex collision shape ourselves in code. And that's what we're using right now. And then on the um, on static body input event, um, when when um, the collision body is clicked on, it's going to go through here. And then we created this get hit mesh triangle face index, and we did some math for that. Well, the thing to take notice is on this this callback method for the static body. You know, we were basically just using the click position. And there's some other parameter. I guess the event too. Um, there's some other parameters here, and there's this last parameter called the shape index. And it's interesting with our current collision shape. Let's let's put some prints in here to see what's going on here. So, if we go ahead and say the face index hit is, and then we do the face index hit. Now this thing here, this is what we're computing ourselves. That's that algorithm we did over the past few videos. But like right after that, let's just go ahead and print, you know, this is the shape index. And then let's print the shape index. And the shape index is this parameter up here that's coming in um, on the callback. So let's go to let's go to Godot and run this and click around our cube and see what it does. So we fire up the game, and then um, we'll click on a few triangles here. So clicking on our little triangles here, and then we'll exit. Now what you're going to notice is our face index will keep changing zero five four. It's computing the correct face. But you notice that the shape index is always zero. So no matter where we click, we're always getting zero. And the uh, the next thing to to 
keep in mind here, I guess this is the recommendation that the person made is, well, using this collision object that I'm using um, currently, uh, let's go back up to where we were, structure, create an assigned QMesh. So um, the, the collision object we were using is a convex collision object. But there are, there's another type of collision object you can use. And so the suggestion was, well, let's not use that. Let's actually, whoops, one more. Let's actually uh, use a different collision object. So there's, there's different kind here. Um, we were using the convex collision. Let's use this tri-mesh collision. But if you go to the tri-mesh collision, it's going to talk about a concave uh, polygon shape. So let's just use that one. Let's let's not talk about what the difference is here. Let's just use that one. We've changed nothing else, and let's just run the game now, and let's see what happens. So if we run the game now, and we click on some triangles, let's see what happens. So we'll click on bam, bam, bam. Well, wait a minute. Now we're noticing face hit index, which is the one we're computing, is 4, but the shape index, which is what's coming in, is 4, five, one, wait a minute, this thing already knows what triangle is being used. Uh, why are we computing on our own? It's already coming in. Why is that? Why is it working? Well, the reason that this works is if you look at the documentation, <clears throat> well, first, I guess let's, let's talk about the difference between convex and concave polygons. So convex polygons, I know these are 2D, but this applies for 3D as well. So convex polygons are basically things without dents. I mean, you you uh, get the when you look this up online, you're going to get these the more formal definition of what you know the degrees and so forth. But basically, the way to look at these things is they have no dents. Um, I've seen somebody else. Another way to describe it is if you take all the sides of a convex polygon and you extend it, they won't go inside the polygon. So like if you extend this line here or you extend this line here, like they won't go inside this triangle. Same with this, same with this. However, down here are concave polygons. They have dents in them. So, I mean, again, the way to look at this is if you extend this line here, oh, it's going inside the polygon. So it's, uh, it's not convex, it's concave. So convex polygons up here, the ones that don't have dents, these are cheaper to compute because if you think about it, you could put, let's say out here, you could put a, uh, let's just say a square around this, and it would mostly cover where that thing is. I mean, obviously it wouldn't be exact, but it would mostly cover it. Um, and these are cheaper to compute because it's just you can use, you can use uh, one cheaper um, surrounding thing to basically cover the polygon. If we're talking collision shapes, I mean. With concave, I mean, you could do that. You could put like a square around this, but it's not really um, representing a lot of what the shape is. I mean, these dents won't be represented at all. And so what usually happens is for concave uh, polygons, if you're using a collision shape, they'll use many collision shapes to kind of hug the surface. It's, it's more expensive to compute, but it's much more accurate too. So what we were doing before was the convex polygon. And so we were only putting one, as far as I can tell when you use that, we were only putting one collision object around this. And the zero that was coming back always uh, when we were checking that shape index with the convex polygon, that zero meant it's a zero index system. So, you know, uh, like in an array, the first item is always going to be zero. So the shape index coming back was always zero because you only had one shape. The convex polygon collision object only had one shape. But when you go to a concave polygon, that um, that's using multiple shapes. And from what I can tell, and this is, this is the part where I caveat it at the beginning. From what I can tell, what they're doing is the way they're making this, I guess, simplistic so they don't have to um, come up with a way to slice and dice it arbitrarily for different shapes is they're just making a collision shape for every triangle. So the reason that that shape index works is because for a concave uh, collision shape, well, the collision shape uh, indices 
are the same as the faces because the way it looks like the algorithm's working is each triangle is itself uh, one of these collision shapes. And if you go to the Godot documentation, they talk about the two different types here, and we were using the convex collision shape. And then down here, it looks like what they're saying, that the, um, the tri-mesh collision shape is how they're computing concave. So that's, that's when you say you're, you're going to use a concave uh, collision shape, there's, there's, there's not something you can select that's concave in Godot, but there is that tri-mesh, which is the thing. And I'm just guessing based on the name, tri-mesh, that, that's, that that in itself is describing the, the method that they're using to compute concave is just creating this triangle mesh that's the same as your uh, geometry mesh. But the thing is, I don't know if you can count on that. I mean, I I was looking through this documentation, and I don't know if if one can count on that um, all the time. However, up to this point, it seems like it's been working, and it's been working in Godot for a while. So, just so we're uh, clear on this, let's let's change our code. So we have this create convex collision commented out. Let's just get rid of that. We're using the tri mesh now. And then let's go to our, um, uh, where's our input event? There it is. Go there. Let's close this up so we have more room. So we don't need this face index anymore, so let's just get rid of all this. And then all we need to do here is the draw selected outline, and we'll just use the shape index. And given that, this, this big method we did, where we were doing all this two global stuff, uh, we'll just get rid of it. We don't need it. So our uh, callback here is a lot simpler. It's just basically you're going to call the draw selected outline with the shape index. We don't need that computational method that we were doing. And so let's make sure this works in Godot. And in fact, let's make sure it, it fixes our caveats, too, of what we had in the other. We, we moved it around. Remember, the two globals weren't quite working right. Uh, or we had to do more two globals, I guess I should say. So let's move the cube around and let's rotate the cube around and make sure we can select all these things um, that we had to fix before in our in our manually coded algorithm. So we hit the play button here. And so if I click around, um, it works. So this is, I would say this is the cleaner and faster method because what we implemented ourselves, our own algorithm, only worked for like the really simple shape like a cube. Uh, if we were going to do this for other shapes, we would have had to have uh, changed and I even caveated uh, inside the video we started this with. You know, I was explaining, well, it only works for this cube thing, but that's fine because we're only doing a cube. But in a general sense, I think using this tri-mesh collision, assuming that it stays, uh, one can count on it um, repeatedly being implemented like it's working now, where the shape index is the same thing as the face index. Um, hopefully that makes sense what I'm talking about here, because um, I think that um, I think this is the better way to do it, so that way uh, you can go ahead and use this on any shape, whether it's a more complicated convex shape or uh, a concave shape, and you let Godot do the heavy lifting. Um, especially since their heavy lifting is in C++, so it's going to be much faster than what we're doing in C-sharp. So I'm presenting this to you as uh, I appreciate the poster mentioning this because uh, I didn't know about this. I didn't know that the, the, the concave implementation was basically wrapping triangles at the same places as your geometry mesh. And because of that, I mean, that's a much cleaner way to do this, and you saw our code shrunk a lot down in that one callback. We didn't even have to have that algorithm method. But just know the caveat that who knows in the future if if they decide that instead of having each collision shape matching a geometry shape, if they implement some other algorithm to do concave um, collision shapes, uh, I'm hoping the name since we, we're using a tri-mesh collision as our name, I'm hoping that that basically counts on this always staying the same. But just realize that. So, you know, you're you're kind of rolling the dice here a little bit, but I think it's a safe rolling the dice. And um, 
it's a lot cleaner than doing what we did. However, I am going to say what we did uh, in those three videos, I think it was three videos, I still think there was value in doing that because I still think, you know, knowing how to cast rays out from the camera and intersecting with uh, cubes, uh, well, geometry here with the cube, uh, I mean, there's value in knowing that versus just magically having a shape index number come in. Like, now I think after you've watched those three videos and now I explain to you how this works, I, ha I have a feeling you now have a better feeling for what that means. I mean, behind the scenes, they're doing a lot of what we were doing in that, that C-sharp method. Theirs is just more complicated. So um, I think there was value in doing that. So anyway, um, I'm going to uh, stop the video here, but I... Uh, I do appreciate the commenter for mentioning that, and uh, you know, hopefully anybody watching this, if anybody has any ideas or sees things that I've done that, that they think they can improve on, feel free to comment. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing these things because I'm learning myself. I've, I've stated this in almost every video. Um, I am not offended if somebody says, dude, there's a better way to do this. It's like, that's cool. <laughs> um, thank you for the lesson. So for that commenter, thank you for the lesson. And uh, so I'll get going here. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.